Welcome back to a brand new section. We continue Structural Design Patterns Part 2. And in this section, we're going to go ahead and meet the fly weight design pattern, the facade design pattern, the bridge, and the proxy design patterns. So let's jump right into the first design pattern, the fly weight design pattern. The fly weight design pattern reduces memory usage in large objects by reducing the size of multiply used objects. The idea is to extract or reduce properties and methods out of an object that is used often and moving those responsibilities to somewhere else so those responsibilities are then not duplicated into every single instance. Imagine that you have 10,000 different objects on the stage and all these items are movable. Now, to make it movable, there's all these properties and all these methods. And now, if you have two properties and two methods, you just added properties and methods to these thousand objects. Contrary to that, if you reduce that and took it out into a third-party controller, something that is outside there, that's controlling whatever is movable, now the instance itself doesn't need all those four new properties slash methods. And now instead of adding 4,000 methods, we've only added four. It is a really cool concept and very, very powerful when you need to improve performance in an application that has a lot of objects in it. So let's take a look at it. Let's start in the flyweight. We're still working with structural design patterns and I went ahead inside of our source files, start source files for section four, and I made a little update that enables us to basically create a shadow or maybe fade out an item as it's being clicked on. I'm just gonna click here on the T to tint it so it'll be easier for us to see it in a more sharp color difference. And the idea is very simple. Whenever we click on something, we basically wanna fade it out partially to get it out of our view. Now, I want to show you the source files, and really we're going to change it right away, but in our circle right now, I've literally added a, quite a clump of code here. And this clump of code has been added to every single circle. I want to broach this and kind of explain why this is not a great idea, especially when you have a lot of circles or a lot of objects. And that is because when you think about it, this fade functionality is only relevant in a scenario where there's a click on an item. As long as a click was not made on an item, then all this is logic is just a waste of logic or extra logic that isn't needed. So really, we don't want to add this functionality to every single circle. Moreover than that, for example, we wouldn't want to use a decorator. Remember, decorators, the same thing. They add this functionality automatically to an item. What we want to do is we want to create something that is very similar to a decorator, but instead of it being a decorator, what we want to do is we want to add this functionality only when it's relevant to that specific item. And even better than that, we want to keep as le the least amount of data inside of our actual circle so we don't then inflate the file size of each element of each, each instance. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything inside of here that I've just created. Just make sure to check it out inside of your starting file so you could see how it was created. And let's go ahead and start working with our new design pattern, which is called fly weight. Now, the fly weight design pattern comes from the world of, I don't even remember the name of it. I'll just leave it in the, in the source file so you could read a little bit more in the references. You could read a little bit more about um, the origins of the name. But I'm going to go ahead and what I want to do is I'm going to just go ahead and create a new function and I'm going to call it fly weight fader. And the idea here is basically we're going to create a fader and this fader is going to literally just take care of basically getting a reference to the item or a reference to whatever we want to fade. And in this process, I'm going to show you, hey, we don't even need to use that icon that we were using previously, that circle that we're using previously. What we could do instead is we could literally just go to that item itself and we're going to use it as if it's a jQuery item and just ask if the item itself has a class using the jQuery functionality. So if it has the class of circle and only if it has the class of circle, then we're going to go to that item and we're going to fade it to that item and we're going to, I'm just going to grab the actual current CSS value of opacity. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to create an extra reference anywhere because I just don't need one. And even if it creates a little bit of an overhead, it's a one-time overhead that is only happening when I'm manipulating a specific item. And this is really all we really need for our flight weight fader. And all that's left for us to do is actually trigger it whenever it's needed. Now I'm going to trigger it outside of my uh, circle. But moreover than that, I'm going to use the most lightweight to access my circle. 
And that is exactly why line 114 is here that I'm filtering out to make sure that it's only the circle. I'm not even going to run an event that is just running for the circles, but I could. I could literally just go ahead and just go into my, into my, for example here, I could say, okay, I just want circles that are inside of the advert or anything that is inside of the advert to check to see if it's a circle. And if it's a circle, then do that update, which I could very easily do that. Or I could go and say, hey, okay, what I really want is uh, only items that are a circle. Now, the problem with doing this is that I'm actually giving this event to every single circle, which I really don't want to do. What I want to do is I want to just capture the event and then check to see if it's a circle, basically saying that there's only one event. And in this case, because I'm already using a click, I'm just going to go ahead and just call the flight weight fader. And I'm going to actually send the item itself to test to see. I'm going to just send this, the item itself that has just been populated, that has just been add clicked on, or actually it's going to be e.target. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this in a jQuery to make sure that it's going to be a jQuery object. Now, once I've done that, what, I'm, what I literally did is I just externally to the object itself, I'm checking to see basically I'm calling the flyweight fader. Flyweight fader is happening inside of that function. All I'm really doing there is checking to see, is it a circle? If it is a circle, then I'm going to reduce the opacity animated down by 0.5%. Now, this change is a very big performance changer, especially when we're talking about a lot of objects. Not necessarily when there's not that many objects going on. But if I go ahead and test this, and let me just open up my console because I probably have your little error here. So let's check the console. Uh, so I'm missing something here in line 113. So line 113. Oh, I wrote function twice by mistake. There we go. Let's just fix that really quickly. Click on refresh and let's go ahead and test this. So there we go. It's still working. It still has the same beautiful functionality, but this beautiful functionality is now working without us needing to add this event to every single circle that is added onto our application. In this lecture, we met the flyweight design pattern. In the next lecture, we're going to visit the facade design pattern and see what is it all about.